So, you want to play Altergeist. By that, of course, you mean that you hate not only yourself, but the person sitting right across from you on the other side of the table. Lucky for you, I am guaranteed to hate myself more, so here's the profile. <laughs> Basically, Altergeist is a super fun deck that I've had a lot of just really cool things happen with this format. As we all know, this format kind of really slow. It's literally just 15 hand traps in any one card engine of your choice. If you do Striker, you're a bad person. If you do Ignister, you're like, you know, kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, Geist is basically what I picked for this format. I think it can take that shell and reduce the amount of hand traps for it to make things more impactful to where even if you draw a hand trap, you can still interact with them even though you're not going first. So I really like it. I think it's a good meta call for this. And of course, if I like a deck, that means I have to build it in paper the night that I make the list. I am, I am an impulsive person. Anywho, here's the profile. Starting off, we have three copies of Altergeist Multifaker. This card is kind of dumb. Hey, remember that Solemn Strike or Solemn Judgment you activated? What if you went plus two off of it? That's what this card does. And also makes your plus one trap card turn to like a plus three. It's really stupid. This card is super fun, super cool, very versatile. You can basically summon a bounce, a searcher, or a negate off of it. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it used to be at one, obviously now it's at three because Konami just can't stop making bad decisions. We have three Mega Seek, the actual best card in the deck. The best card going second and first. It's kind of dumb. Uh, it's your starter. You like half of your extra eggs is dedicating to getting this thing in the fucking grave uh, and then going second as long as they don't have literal dragoon or I guess maybe like Evermax or whatever who cares you can guarantee some way to get an interaction out of your opponent whether it be a widow anchor an imperm even like if someone's still playing dragon link because they're playing like three months ago or something uh, you can even bake the seal with it it's pretty cool we have three marionetter this card is weird because it's not a starter in the sense that it gets your engine going like basically doesn't search faker so why would you play it but at the same time it gets you in a gate it gets you if all well, of you already have in a gate because you heard of the game and hard drew it uh, gets you like your recursion piece to bring back your searcher again. It's basically just the best extender in the deck as well as the fact that it can also just bring back the Mega Seek by itself. It's pretty cool like that. Also it can bring back the Faker as well. We have one Concurry, two Sequidius. Uh, Concurry is weird this format because there's no like super good target for it if you summon off a Faker. For an example, uh, the format where Geist was good, shout out to Pack for making it good. Uh, you would just do Concurry target resort and then they couldn't really do anything. This format, I think the best target for it is probably Will of the Salomon Great, or maybe even the Field Spell if you can get it at the right time. It's all right, or maybe one Sunlight Wolf if they've already relinked with it. It's just a bit spotty when it comes to, obviously the best deck is Dritron, which doesn't really have any super good activated effects, or just super good effects that don't already trigger on the summon, like say the XYZ. That being said, you can hit like, Maybe like a hard read on a herald if you already impermit, but wanted to last the like until your next turn. That's really the best target for it. And striker, obviously, you just hit the multi roll. Like that's basically it for them. Uh, so Quidius is insane as it always is. Even against Stridetron, if you bounce the X Y Z, it hurts them a lot. Or the Diviner, fun fact, because then they can't make a level six for Beatrice. You can bounce the Nightingale, bounce the Zeus target. That's what the Nightingale is, the Or if they already make Downer, and then you forget to bounce the Nightingale, you can just bounce the Downer because they give it to you for free. You can tell how bad that was because that's my camera shaking in rage. So the hand traps need a bit of explaining. We have three Crow, three Valor, and two Ash Blossom. So let me explain. For my meta specifically, I know that literally everyone, including someone's actual mother there, is playing Salomon Great. So I really want to side for that in preparation for it. So I'm playing three Crow because Jesus Christ, if you crow their spinny, they die inside. Three Valor, because it's pretty versatile and just sort of negating Sunlight Wolf, negating Gazelle, negating Stalio. Really, just getting anything on field is super good in this format. And it's a lot more versatile to where Crow and Valor actually cut them off a resource. For an example, um, if you Bell their Jag Jaguar, then it still saves it for next turn. And that's a problem. If you Crow it, for an example, it's gone. Same against Drytron, to where if you Crow their name, they can't use it for the rest of basically the duel until they get another one versus if you bell it, they just wait till next turn. That's how you win versus decks that keep resource management on the board, and why I don't really like maining bell for that. Valor as well is a negate shit, like Sunlight Wolf, to where if you negate one of the effects, they have to basically link it to another one to even activate the next effect. And if you catch them on the relink, then they really get hurt by it. And that's why I'm not like a super big fan of Ash, at least this format, where something is so resource placement oriented versus resource activation oriented. 
as well as the fact that everyone in their, well, like this point, literal mother is playing Hita, which if you ash them, they can Hita back the ash and just use it as an extender, which really sucks against this deck because it's basically just a free access code or a Heatleo and Salad. Which, as you know, as a backer deck, kind of fucking hurts <laughs> if you get heat leoed. And that's basically it. I think uh, if your meta is not, like, so fire animal dependent, uh, you could probably sub the uh, third Ash and then take out Crows for two Bell, and then side the third Bell, or just the Crow by itself, uh, if you really want to, because I'm not really... Obviously, I just want I just want to lose to Trirogate, dude. That's mainly it. Uh, who, that deck isn't real. Of course it isn't. Uh, we have Starters, we have Pot of Prosperity, and Duality is a bit different than some list, but Prosperity is crazy in this deck. Uh, in this case, I am actually poor. <laughs> you definitely want to run uh, 3 Prosperity in this deck, but obviously I don't have it because I didn't buy these in general. I actually opened both of these because I am an insane pack puller person. P-Cube is what I call myself, and Duality I want to talk a bit about. I've seen a lot of people cut this card, I don't know why. It's a fantastic ascender to where if you already open Faker, you open Melusik, and Protocol, you open a way to get rid of Melusik, or even just spoofing, you basically just do duality to get another interruption of your choice, whether it be a Solemn, or a Hand Trap, or Imperm, you just have a lot of ways to find more interactions with your opponent when you're going first. That being said, I normally side it out when I know I'm going second, because that's how you break boards, because Melusik is a good card. Uh, speaking of starters, three personal spoofing, Jesus Christ, this card is crazy. The fact that you can use this not only as an like, starter, but as protection for the rest of your Geist if you don't already have protocol on board is nuts. So, for those who don't know, what you can do is turn three, turn five, and already activate this. If you like normal summon Marionette, and they try and imperm Valor it, you can just shuffle a little wave of spoofing, and now there's no target, so it can't be negated. It is crazy. There's a ton of interactions like that, especially with, like, say, uh, these cards right here, Protocol and Manifestation, two and one of, by the way, don't run two of this, you're not super greedy, um, where you activate these cards, especially Manifestation, so you activate Manifestation, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, you spoofing it away, because it's not destined to go to the graveyard, whoa, you just went plus three, because you just revived something and searched something off of something for free, and also kept this in the deck in case they have something like Cosmic. Protocol is a good card as well, it's a monster negate, and says your things cannot be negated, that sounds kind of broken as a continuous trap. It really is. And Manifestation uh, can actually loop infinitely with Silk as well. To where basically, if you have Silk and Grave Manifestation on field, just summon the Silk, dude, it's free. And then you can bounce Manifestation and then bounce something that, oh, whoa, it's the same. You can do that every turn, it's nuts. Uh, now we just get to the good stuff traps. We have three Strike, three Emperm, three Judgment, and the Simulator card, one order. So this format, I realized a lot of people can't play through these cards to where a Strike on like a summon of a Striker Link, if they don't literally have Hornet Drones specifically, you win the game. If you just Judgment as well, or Imperm's also, a, I've heard Imperm's an all right card in this deck. You know, if you draw it with Faker, you do turn one Silk, it's really dumb. Uh, I don't actually consider Imperm that big of a hand trap in this deck just because a lot of people just have so much backer removal in terms of tools, whether it be Harpies or Cosmic or Twin or Lightning Storm, maybe I go on, or fucking Pank, Jesus Christ. There's so many <laughs> these days. Basically, a lot of these traps are only here to stop them from playing, whether it be judgmenting their starter, <laughs> like engage, judgment getting engaged, and then crowing it feels good, I will say. Basically, all these cards are super good, as well as they trigger Faker. If you can count in the deck at 16 traps, you're statistically likely to always open at least two, as well as eight hand traps, so you always at least open one, at least theoretically, unless you're me and draw can curry silk silk manifestation all the time. <laughs> Basically, the ideal hand in this deck goes a way to get to multi-faker, a hand trap, two traps, and then a fifth, like, weird card, whether it be an interruption or starter or follow-up, whatever it is. And you want to sort I sort of built the deck around that, that sort of idea, and what do we do with that? So let's see in the extra deck what we can do. So extra deck, if there's one aspect of this deck that I feel the strongest about, it's definitely the extra. I think I nailed it completely, and I have solid explanations for all of them, but I'm not going to say them now because I don't feel that confident. Link Rebo, because Melusik is a good card, except for when it's not. I have literally never seen this in a, in a deck to see like its actual purpose, or, like attack removal or protection, besides like bullshit barrier statue decks. And like, it's just there to put something in the grave. Like, we all know it. We all love it. 
if you don't love Link Room, what's wrong with you? Uh, Artemis, because of a certain side card that you'll see later, as well as a couple things in the extra, it's also there if you draw Silquidius in Manifestation specifically, to where you can normal summon Silk, make Artemis, and then say Manifestation, you have a live bounce on their next turn, what would otherwise be a very brick hand, as well as late game when you need to sort of link off something. If you have a leftover Melly Seek, link Melly Seek away for you already went through Link Creepo, and then you can just like. Do you see what I'm saying? It's whatever. If you have okay, in the specific situation, you have Link Creepo on board and a Melia Seek, you can Artemis it away right here. That's what I've been trying to say. I I am just great at talking. I love talking. Anima is a card that should not be good, but in practice is very good because people just don't play around it. Uh, I've stolen so many windows with this card because people just forget that it exists. It's, and it may just be my locals being batshit stupid, but and, you, know, you know, I don't want to say that out loud or on camera or anything. So here it is, as well as actually it comes up against Appaloosa specifically, to where, uh, you know, Melu Seek, swing in, negate, uh, and then you make Anima, negate, and then you added both of them because the tri Brigade board usually only ends with two materials. It's pretty nice like that. And then we have the only card that matters, Hextia, our Lord and Savior. This card is nuts. It is a Spell and Trap negate that also negates Spell and Trap effects, by the way, so it's better than Judgment, and just searches a card when it leaves. Jesus Christ, this card is nuts. If you Manifestation this card back, pointing under another Hextia, you are like pretty much guaranteed to win the game regardless of anything your opponent can They can draw the whole deck, you don't care. They're not, you are, they are not playing through anything you do at that point. It is nuts. Uh, the Hita and Alina. This requires a couple of things to explain. So Hita is for the Salad Mirror, or the Salad Match, to where basically you make Hextia, you link away Hextia for a Mahita, then you Hita back their Silent Wolf, that's an instant access code. Alina's a bit different because you use Marionetter. Basically you use that to revive their Veiler, revive their fucking Mechaboo, I guess, if they're still stuck in the invoked time travel machine that is that deck. And then you can also summon Seal, you can summon any Dry Tron Ritual they successfully summoned as well, that's pretty cool. If you somehow like steal their Herald and then discard a Fairy, you're nuts, I will say. As well as the fact that Lyanna can search Nibiru, even though we don't play it, it can search Valor, that, that's a card that we do play. Hey, look at me remembering things. That's super cool. One Nightmare Phoenix, because Floodgates fucking suck. I kid you not, I've been Royal Decreed before online, and this card comes up a lot. It's just nice. Yeah, basically, it's for when you need to remove two cards from the board, and then one, you only have one Melu Seek to where you do not Melu Seek, swing and get rid of the monster, and then you can basically use this as a follow up to make the Phoenix. It's pretty nice. Uh, Prime Banshee, I've never resolved this card successfully. This card's in here because it looks nice, because it. Is symmetrical, it's a name. Basically, you only really make this when your initial faker gets stopped and you have no way to recycle it back to your hand, whether that be you don't have spoofing, you don't have silk, but then you somehow have three monsters on board, like a Melusi or a Marionetter, or actually something that comes up a lot more is that you normally summon Marionetter, bring back a Hextia because you don't have a Melusi anymore because they crow it, or you just don't have it for some fucking reason, and then you make this with the faker to summon the faker on their turn. It's weird, it rarely comes up at whatsoever, but at the same time, it also recycles resources, so it's pretty nice. Uh, Selene, because Striker's a deck and you want to win against them, uh, you just make this, summon a fucking whatever, when literally anything you want is my access code, it's free. This card comes up so much, it's Ningirisu, and this is the re another reason you play Artemis, is because this card is out so much stupid shit in the format, like Dragoon, like Dragoon, <laughs> like fucking Dragoon. This card's nuts, it's just free send anything, and then worst case, if you end on it, it's just there, then they have to out it, and if they don't out it, you're just doing it again next turn. It's kind of crazy. It's, I do wish there was a link arrow at the bottom, but like, whatever, dude, it's fun. Avermax is nuts because in this deck, if you do Avermax set four pass, your opponent just can't play. <laughs> Basically, you make this when you don't really plus off making access code, but you can, and then you just want to sort of have something on the board once you clear it with an Ingirisu, and then just sit on the things where they basically will not out this, even if they out your back row. It's pretty nice. I like it a lot. It comes up a little bit, and also can out the fucking Ignister card and the uh, another Avermax for some reason because everyone our player, everyone our locals play Avermax, dude. It's painful. And then we run access code because, like, Jesus Christ is access code. That's how you win every single game. And then this is a bit of spice. We have the Underworld Goddess. It outs weird things like the Attic Mister card. I've, I've done this bit already where, like, I say the name over again, but Jesus Christ, this deck cannot out that card. 
it's just nice to have his utility to out a weird boss monster that your opponent can somehow make through all your interruptions. It rarely, if ever, comes up, but if it does, it fucking does. So you have the room for it. I usually manage up prosperity, but hey, if you have the room for it, why not play it? All right, and the side deck. This is gonna appear a bit suspicious, but I'm gonna try and do my best explaining it. We have one Ash, two Ghost Spell. Okay, please don't close off the video. So as I said, I have a pretty good recognition of my local's meta to where a lot of things play things that get hit by DD Crow. By that I mean they play anything but fucking Tri Brigade. If you're playing against Tri Brigade or in a YCS where literally half the decks represented with Tri Brigade, Jesus Christ, that deck's a problem. Basically, you want to play these instead. So take out the Crows, Third Ash, and Two Bell. I think they're super good. And another advantage that this deck has specifically is the only card you really care about that they have is Ash. To where if they ask your mail you see it gets like okay that hurts a little bit but everything else whether it be Valor, Imperm, fucking Crow, who's gonna crow a fucking mail you seek or a marionette or target, I don't know. I mean doesn't really affect this deck that much. So you have, have liberty to play all these cards that interact with your opponent, but they don't really do that much against you. And as well as I really just like the flexibility of putting in separate hand traps to where if something if Crow doesn't hit something as hard, I just put these in or something cool that you can do if you're feeling risque like me, is the side deck has a lot more trap cards in it to where you can actually side out your imperms and side in these to where if they side in backer removal, it doesn't really matter because you can just keep all your interruptions in hand so they can't really remove anything. For example, if you they harpies you and you only have set one, A, that's a one-form that doesn't do anything, but B, if it's at that point, if you set imperms, it's either gonna be a strike, which unfortunately gets dead, or something to deal with that card. Or, since you set out your imperms, if I said that enough, you set out your imperms, it's crazy, you have this in hand where even if they wipe out your stuff, you can still do it and if it's a Geist card, you can just flip it off and activate your Faker. It's pretty nuts, that's what I was trying to say. I spent two fucking minutes saying that for some reason, but here it is. We have three Gam Seal. This card's nuts, this format. Against Striker, against Salad, it just turns off their back row completely to where they have to only really do their hand traps in hand. And hey, as I said, hand traps do dog fucking shit against this deck. It's really cool. I think the worst application this card has is probably against Drytron because it trades a one card for two interruptions to where they can't interrupt you four times, you can only do it twice with both orange lights in hand. But at the same time, your deck doesn't really do that when breaking boards. You normally set three and then do it. And good players usually herald the on-field on effect of Faker versus the hand effect. So if you do that, you flip a protocol, they lose the game. It's pretty fun. This card's nuts, as well as Alice the Ignister card. If I haven't made that apparent, I fucking hate that card. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the card that makes the deck on fun to play against. We have three Secret Village, one Terraforming, one Metaverse. This card is crazy, this format. Instant winning at Striker. Instant winning at Salad because they can't relink or use any of their recursion things. In pretty much an instant winning at Stridetron if you can out the Nightingale with a Silk. Basically, it forces them to do that Zeus play and you can just bounce the Nightingale, they lose the game. This card is crazy as well as it's how you deal with all the like dog shit spell removal that's in the format, like Twin, like Cosmic, like Harpies, like Lightning Storm. And even if they pank you under this, it forces them to pank this and not your back row, which is just, oh my god, it's nuts. Like this card is insane. They can not only protect your stuff, but also hinder your opponent from playing. And I think it's just better than any spell because as Mr. Doug Zeef said, any spell loses to half of those back row removal cards. So you want something that can stop them from playing as well as stop them from getting rid of your back row. It's super cool. And if you just don't have a spellcaster on board, like what are you doing with this deck? You're running Artemis for a reason. Uh, rest of the deck, hey, remember those back row decks? Yeah, I mean, who would be playing those, you know? Uh, yeah, these these cards are for those. That's how you that's how you beat that game, is you just activate evenly and smile. If you're playing in Salad, don't play this card, because they have Roar. This card's pretty nice, though. It trades one for one for Roar. It's nice. That's basically it. You can also do some five-head reads, actually, with evenly. If you do a Mel you Seek, and then swing in, and then, like, they bounce it with something, and that's the end of battle. Ah, yes. I have won that game. <laughs> And uh, I, would not, I would not really say build around drawing Imperm evenly Faker. Like super often, it never really comes up. Even though apparently my Drytron opponent can always draw Herald Eva, I can never draw these cards together. It, it happens, like you don't really need it. It's really just too much, honestly. Like you want your opponent to have, at least have a chance before you flip order on them and then play the NFL theme extremely loudly. Anywho, that's the, uh, that's the deck. I hope you enjoy. I'm probably gonna make a video on this in the future and playing it in the public atmosphere. Of course, it is the South Carolina atmosphere, so it's probably gonna smell like corn in the cob. Anywho, uh, yeah, that's me. See ya.